you're now moving on to another game at Meta AI called Diplomacy, which similarly has hidden intentions, hidden information. Can you explain the game of Diplomacy to us? So Diplomacy is this seven player game where there is a big emphasis on cooperation in addition to competition. So the way the game works, it's kind of like Risk, if you've ever played Risk before. Um, you uh, are control one of seven powers and you know, you move pieces on a board and you try to control, uh, uh, you try to take over the board. It's like uh, a map of Europe, right? Yes. Just like Risk. Yeah. Um, but the, the focus of the game is on negotiations with the other players. So at the start of each turn, you spend about 15 minutes talking to other players in private, um, negotiating with them, saying, I'll support you, I'll help you this turn if you help me next turn, or um, you know, make all sorts of deals and alliances. Um, but then at the end of that negotiation phase, everybody writes down their moves at the same time, and all the moves are executed simultaneously. So when you play this in person with people, you would go off into separate rooms and that kind of thing. And so you'd kind of have this sense of like, you might have some sense of who's strategizing with whom based on who went off together and had a secret conversation, that kind of thing. That's right, yeah. So you, you don't, and you don't know what the conversations that they're having are, but you know this person's talking to this person and you, they, they tell you what their conversation was about. Maybe they're lying, maybe they're telling the truth. Um, so there's a lot of intrigue. And then because all the moves are written down simultaneously, because you're not, hold, you're not held to uh, any agreements that you said, there's a lot of backstabbing and betrayal that happens in the game. You, you, you tell somebody or they tell you that they're gonna support you and then the moves happen and you see, oh, they actually decided to attack you. Um, and, and so it's a, very, it's a very different game from these purely adversarial games like poker, chess, go. You really have to understand cooperation and trust and be able to build trust with these other players and understand the human psychology of the game as well. That sounds incredibly complex to work into an algorithm today. Yeah, and to be honest, like the reason why we decided to work on Diplomacy Next is because after poker, you know, we saw the breakthroughs that were happening in, in games like Go, poker, even games like StarCraft, and um, it became clear that AI was advancing very rapidly. Um, in 2016, you have AIs beating top humans in the game of Go, 2017, poker. Um, after that, people were saying, well, StarCraft and uh, real-time strategy games are the next grand challenge for AI. But you know, that fell within two years. Uh, and, and so we wanted to say, we, we were saying like, look, Go took decades for AIs to beat humans at. Chess took decades, poker took decades. What is a game that would be so beyond the capabilities of AI techniques today that it, it would take a similar amount of time? It would be similarly impressive if we were to succeed. And we felt like diplomacy was that game. Yeah, that's so cool. And so there's two different variations on this diplomacy gameplay. There's the press version and the no press version, right? And so it sounds like the no press version could be easier because there's less communication or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so uh, you know, we, we took on this, this really ambitious goal of making an AI that could beat top humans in this game. Uh, obviously that's, that's a very long-term goal. And so uh, as a short-term objective, we decided to focus on a simpler version of the game that's still popular among humans, um, where there's no uh, explicit communication between the players during, during each phase. Got it. Now, this is still actually a very difficult challenge because you have to, um, so, so everybody just writes down their moves without talking to each other, and then they, they're executed simultaneously. But what's different here is because it's not a two-player zero-sum game, you have to model the other players, and that's actually a key part of this game. You can't just approximate an equilibrium in the same way that you do with Go and poker and expect to do well because you have to uh, be able to model the other players and, and uh, you know, best respond to that. Uh, from a game theory standpoint, what's going on here is that there are multiple Nash equilibria. Like Nash equilibrium is this like really nice solution concept. Um, in two player zero sum games, you can compute any sort of equilibrium and they're all kind of interchangeable. Um, you don't have to play the same one as the other person in order to do well. Um, but in a game like Diplomacy, there are multiple different equilibria. And so you could, through self-play, just by learning from scratch, playing against yourself, learn an equilibrium, but it doesn't mean that you're going to do well with actual humans because they might be playing a different equilibrium. It's kind of like if it was self-driving cars. If you had a car that learned to drive purely on its own without any uh, human data, it might learn to drive on the left side of the road. And that's a totally reasonable solution. Uh, it's an equilibrium that's, that's totally valid. But if you were to put it on, on the roads in Manhattan, it would not do very well. So you have to understand how humans drive and how humans uh, play these games in order for the AI to do well in these games. So that presents to me 
perhaps one of the big challenges here is where do you get your training data for something like this? So the, the contemporary um, game playing, Go game playing algorithms, uh, while they originally, so AlphaGo, the one that's popularized in the AlphaGo documentary, was trained on some human gameplay. But then the more recent versions of the game, there's no human gameplay that it's trained on at all. So you just have the algorithm playing against itself, and in so doing, it comes up with ways of learning and ways of playing Go that had world champion Go players describing it as like having aliens on Earth. Mm. So with diplomacy, how can you emulate having a human involved in your training data and still have tons and tons and tons of training data? Yeah, so that's right. So, so um, AlphaGo did use human data, but, but, but the more recent versions, AlphaZero, um, don't use human data. You don't need human data to do well in a game like Go. And actually with poker as well, we didn't use any human data and we were able to beat top humans. And, and that is a feature of purely adversarial games. But uh, in a game like Diplomacy, we've actually shown that we trained a bot without human data just by playing against itself. And we played it with real humans and it didn't do well. Um, so fortunately, there is a website, webdiplomacy.net, where um, humans play this game, and we're able to, we were able to get training data from that site. Um, and so we are able to use that to get some indication of how humans play. It's not a huge amount of data, um, but it is, it is enough that we were able to build a bot, um, that we were able to model the humans and then build a bot that could play well with that human model. Oh, wow. So, and then that bot, is it using the same kind of deep reinforcement learning that you're using for the general uh, diplomacy algorithm that you're building, or is it some kind of separate algorithm? So um, th th what we did is we, th this is actually very cutting edge research. So we, a we actually just put out a paper recently on this and we're gonna put out another paper in the near future uh, going into more detail about this. But like we, uh, so I should, I should start by saying how the, the Go and poker AIs work. They start from scratch playing totally randomly and then um, play against themselves. And in that process, uh, so what's called self-play, they gradually improve. So they understand, okay, this action's making me more money or winning more often, I should take this more often in the future. And in the long term, they eventually converge to this equilibrium. Um, and in diplomacy, we end up doing something similar except we regularize the algorithm, we regularize the policy towards this human imitation learning policy uh, that we have. So we, we regularize it towards the human data. Um, and, and so in that way, it's finding an equilibrium that is in some sense compatible with how humans are playing. Um, and so we actually ran a competition just recently uh, where we pitted this AI against uh, 50 real humans, uh, sorry, uh, more than 50 actually, quite, quite a few uh, real humans in a tournament and the AI came in first place in, in no press diplomacy. Wow, and so that's what you just published on. That, that is actually um, still, it's gonna be published soon, but we, the, the technique that we described in an earlier paper and this, this result we're going to publish uh, in the near future.